Hi, this is Taryn Grom, editor of Pharma Voice. We met with numerous inspirational thought leaders at this year's DIA annual conference as part of our Editors Take video series. I hope you enjoy this discussion. In this episode, we have a discussion with Kent Tolke, Executive VP, Scientific and Medical Affairs, Safety and Commercialization Services, PRA Health Sciences. What impact will big data have on innovation in the clinical trial space? I think that we have been steeped kind of in tradition in the clinical trial industry, certainly in the clinical development space. So we have had this model for a very long time, phase one, phase two, phase three. It has taken a lot of patients, certainly control arms have eaten up a lot of patients. I think that um, what we're trying to understand is given the wealth of data that's out there. So if you look at all the data that's been generated from the beginning of time until now, uh, and you look at all the data between now and the next year or two, we will generate as much data in the next year or two as has been developed in the last several hundred years, right? So that volume of data has tons of information in it. The question is, how do we leverage that to more efficiently get drugs to market? There is so much experience out there with drugs in the marketplace today. We have more and more information coming through electronic health records. We have more and more information coming from claims data. So the question is, with all of the tools that we have from a, a technology standpoint today, predictive analytics, modeling, data mining, how do we mine all of that data to get as much information out of it as possible to ensure patient safety, to understand if there's efficacy out there of drugs we're unfamiliar with, if there's drug-drug interactions, and how do we leverage all of that to shorten the overall drug development times to get you know, life-saving, life-changing medications to drugs and, and to patients faster. So um, I believe that while we have had this kind of long, somewhat archaic, slow, prehistoric moving clinical drug development process, that the next decade will explode and it will be completely focused on data. And if you're not using data somehow, some way to speed up that development process, you'll be left behind. What are the challenges of managing the growing wealth of data? So, you know, I always tell this to clients, data is just data. It's just the data, it's agnostic, right? It's not gonna be nice to you, it's not gonna be mean to you, it just is. And I think there's so much potential to read into data correctly or incorrectly, right? So we often say this about statistics, I can prove anything with statistics, whatever I wanna prove. I think that um, one of the challenges will be there's so much data, right? So how do you look at it? How do you make it appropriate for what your question is? I think that it's very easy to get lost in the data. It's very easy to, to just put your hands up and say, we don't really know what to do with it. So I think what we don't have today is a wealth of data scientists, right? People that truly understand what's in that data, how to ask the right questions. Modeling, uh, mining questions is critical, right? And then the next question is, and this goes kind of beyond just mining data, which I think anybody can write a query and mine data. You get into artificial intelligence, right? So the ability for machine learning to read patient charts, patient histories, data mines, and, and pull out information from those will be critical. And then beyond that, you get into predictive analysis. So you've got um, things like uh, natural language processing. So where computers such as IBM Watson can actually read unstructured data. So it's not just your lab values anymore, right? It's can the computers and the technology we have actually read the written word that's in your chart. So there's so much data out there that is unstructured, history and physical, radiology reports, things like that. The ability for computers to do all of that and take away some of that manual process will happen faster than we know, right? And the question is, how do you harness all of that and really make it applicable? So. How will partnerships be assessed in terms of their ability to utilize big data? I think it's a big question today. So, I mean, there are clearly people in this space outside, I should say outside of our space, so not in the clinical trials industry. People that have been using data for a really long time and they've done it really well, right? So if you take for an, uh, an example, American Express or one of your credit card companies, uh, you know, when you, when they have fraud detection, right, they have computer algorithms that look at everything that you do every day and they say, okay, this was out of the norm. So we need to go look at that, right? You get a call on your phone, you get a text on your phone saying this is some, you know, some uh, extraordinary behavior. So the question is, can we use that, right, in the clinical trial space as well? So can we take all of these companies that have, have really um, 
specialized and become experts in the fields of data and how we apply data to ask questions and answer them and pull it into our industry, right? So we don't have to redevelop this, right? We're not reinventing the wheel. There are other companies that are not in drug development that have all of these skills. The ability to take and partner with people that maybe aren't in our industry and bring them in and use best practices, that will be key. And I feel like um, one of the challenges we have as an industry is we're a little bit xenophobic. Like clinical development and clinical trials and drug development is so different from the rest of the world. People just don't understand. You don't understand how different this is. When actually, I would argue that some of those other industries are doing far better at us in harnessing and leveraging kind of the 21st century data, which we have not been so good at, right? We're still struggling to understand electronic health records, right? How do we make that simple with 500 different systems? So the ability to kind of go outside our industry and take best practices and say, there might be people out there that know some of this better than we do. How do we get that together and collaborate and make a better drug development, right? How do we get things to patients faster, quicker, more efficiently? For more information on this topic, visit our Thought Leaders website. For more Editors Take videos from the 2015 DIA Annual Conference, visit www.pharmavoice.com. Thanks for joining us.